What is up, Internet Land? Zachamus Prime, aka Zachamus Prime, here with another Transformers third party review. Today, the figure we're going to be reviewing is the Moon Studio Green Zone. And this is the fourth and final. Let me get this properly sent out. The fourth and final member of their combiner team. And first of all, I'd like to say that. I really like that they came out with these figures so freaking fast. I mean, we've been, we're on like, what, year four? Waiting for fans toys to finish a combiner. <laughs> these guys churned out the whole thing in like less than six months. That's faster than one figure per per month. Like, seriously. I, I really like that. But anyhow. So Green Zone. Green Zone looks an awful lot like the last guy that we reviewed whose name escapes me at the moment, but because um, it's basically you've got, you know, you've got, it's, it's, it's a limb bot. So it's very, very similar to the other one, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's how they're supposed to be. But yeah, he looks really good. The, the green that they use on it is really well done. Um, the orange contrasts very nicely with that. Um, I'm sure that the green and, green and orange is, you know, referential to, like, how it, an original train in Japan is supposed to look, so I'm sure it's on point. But yeah, again, with all the other figures, as, as with all the other figures, um, like, all the paint is metallic-y looking. You know, you got this metallic -y dark green, this metallic -y gray, metallic -y black, metallic -y red, orange. Like, it's all very nicely done, very very tastefully applied. I haven't seen any issues with, like, overspray or whatnot. Um, the leg paneling, this, like, faux detailing here on the outside of the leg is really well done. Because, of course, you know, this is what's going to be the outside of the train in train mode, so... Like, this is just here to look pretty, and it really does look pretty. Again, a very well-made figure. Um, looks good, feels good. I've said enough nice things about these figures for the past several months that, like, it very much applies here. I, I, I'm not even sure what all I can add. His accessories that he comes with is his gun here, which drop and that will just attach into his hand using the uh, using like a masterpiece style peg curl his fingers around the only thing about this is that um, it doesn't quite fit because the, the 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 issues that I have with this are like this hand doesn't really Let's see if I can get that thumb out of the way so that we can get a good look at it. So if you put this out here, even even as far out as that peg goes, it wants to make a, a, a conflict between the butt of this gun and his forearm. Like if this handle was a little bit longer, or especially if that butt of that gun was a little bit smaller, it would have made this all a lot easier. But you can still kind of fudge it into work. It's not the most secure hold in the world, but it is a hold and it does stay there. And it looks pretty good. Got the, uh, you know, metallic -y black and the like sharp red metallic on the outside. So that all looks really good and on point. I just, I just wish that the ergonomics of this worked a bit better. It's the only one in this whole set that, that has any issues with this gun. So, a nice little spot for an Autobot symbol there. That's cool, too. But, yeah, there he is from the front, the side, the back. Fairly clean overall. Um, very much very much like how the, uh, the last five were. So, pretty clean, not super kibbly. Everything's integrated well. I do have a little bit of issue with this tab. It doesn't seem to want to really... There we go. Well, no. I don't know. Minor tabbing issue. 
But yeah, that was his accessory. The only other accessory he comes with is the uh, now completely standard um, coupling, magnetic couplings. And he comes with one of these guys, exactly the same as the last one we saw. Opens up. Closes. You can move this. In fact, there's an outside chance that this is actually the same one that we looked at last time. They are identical. But anyhow, in terms of articulation, articulation is going to be uh, pretty much identical to the last one that we looked at. So his head is on a ball joint. It will look up, it will look down. A little bit of side to side tilt rotates. Oh, a little bit impeded in the rotation due to the way these shoulder pylons are and his like face sticks out here on these corners. But I mean, you don't need to poltergeist his head around. He just looks side to side. Plus you can make use of this uh, transformation joint to increase how much he looks up and how much he looks down. Though that does not appear to increase how much he can turn his head. Still, I mean, it's a fairly good amount. I'll give it to him. Shoulder goes all the way around, comes out for the full tree pose, bicep swivel, single joint elbow for over 90 degrees of bend. That's nice. The wrist is on this transformation joint, which definitely can be used and used well for posability. Rotation here at the wrist. The hands are just like we saw in all the other ones. So um, ball joint and a pin on the thumb, ball joint and a mid finger pin on the fingers. These are all each individually posable. So very good. He's got a full waist rotation, and if you come back here and undo this little tab right here, come on, there we go. Then he's got ab crunch. Yes, so, yes, so. Hip skirts are going to move up and out of the way of his leg, which goes forward that much, backwards that much, goes out for the full Van Dam. He's got a very high up minimal thigh swivel. I, I still kind of feel like this particular sculpt would have done well for actually having a cut thigh here, but this thigh, by the way, is die cast. And so it feels cool to the touch. Also, on this one, these panels up at the front here, these are both die cast. So, a little bit of a weird one because I looked on the last one and Cool Peak, I remember now, he didn't have he didn't have die cast at the front of these panels, but this guy does. Knees bend 90 degrees on a ratchet. And you can get like a little bit of wiggle out of the toe and as much angle tilt as you need. So again, pretty much just like the last one, again, a decent amount of posability. It's actually fairly well done. But let's turn him into a train. So what we want to do is take his hand, fold it up, the extremely traditional posable hand position with the thumb across and the fingers curled. Rotate this in and close that back up. Do the same for the other side real quick while we've already got it here. And I'm just going to do one arm all the way. <clears throat> we want to open these up. Pull out these panels right here. And then close this again. This head is going to come forward on this double joint here. And then these pylons are going to rotate around 180 degrees. The arm is going to come out a little bit. It's going to disconnect from this tab that's shown here. It's going to come out. And then we're going to disconnect this and swing it around on this 
double joint here. This pivoty panel. And you want to pull open this tab right here. Come on, come on. There we go. And you want to pull open, well, let's just move this all out. Pull open this panel right here, and then this panel right here. And this whole thing is going to come up, and then this forearm is going to rotate around. You want to open up the section here, and then this tab is going to fit into that slot. Ugh. When I put this around, I didn't get, hello, I didn't get that tab to go behind this panel. So we're just going to bend this out and put it back in so that now it's on the proper side. And then make sure that that tab fits into that slot. And that's one. Real quick before I do too much with this, I do want to pull out this little panel right here and this little panel right here. And we're going to do the same for the other side. So open this up, flip that arm, that hand in, bring this up, pivot this around. Well, actually bring it out and yeah, pivot this around, bring this panel out. Bring this panel out, bring that up, and then pop this open, bring that around, tab that into place. Well, before we get that tabbed in, it wants to it wants to have all this come open to pull that out and to pull that out. And then tab this into place. And then with both of these tabbed into place, we can take this, make sure that these are in ever so slightly, or I don't know, whatever, however that wants to go. Bring this around, set that there. Tab this into place. There's a tab right inside here. And then this is the part that I haven't actually been able to successfully do. I did it with the last train guy. I got these panels, these little skinny panels here, to line up properly. And I haven't been able to do that with this guy yet. And I'm not sure exactly what the holdup is. So I'm going to give it the old college try right here. Love. We're going to see if maybe we can figure out what makes this tick. Come on. I was playing with this figure earlier because of course, you know, I gotta I gotta transform it and run it through its paces before I, I get on the video about it. So that I don't look like a complete doofus. You know, I'll take like a partial doofus for sure. But I couldn't get this to go. I didn't know I don't know why this uh this one panel here doesn't want to latch into itself.
Everything's lined up. It all looks good. The, the, the little dovetails on this next panel up, they fit together just fine. But these ones just want to be a dick. I don't know. I feel like there might be some sort of a minor mold defect in there. Or maybe a possibly a clearance issue. I don't know. I'm going to have to leave it because I don't have enough. I don't have an unlimited amount of time to sit here and play with that. So we're going to pull this into place. Flip this around. And then these tabs are going to fit into little pegs. Those pegs are going to fit into little holes on this orange roof. And these are going to open up. Plug into there. This whole section is going to double joint out. And then this tab is going to fit into that slot. And then you just want to open up your wheels. And that's basically half the train is done. So let's work on the back half. Back half is going to work by coming around. We're just going to do one leg at a time. We're going to open this up. By the way, I want to point out something that I missed on the last train. So if you're watching all of my videos, you can go back and comment that I missed it like a doofus. But this little black panel, I thought that this was something that came out in the combined mode, but it does not. It fits in right here. And um, these two little slots on this uh, black piece here, they slide over those tabs, both of them. And it gets this little black panel kind of locked in place, which covers up the unsightly gap that would otherwise be left there. So, like, no gap. So, I think that's cool. I mean, it, I already thought that it looked good on the last one before I knew that that was what that was for. But now that I know, like, it's like, damn, it's, it's even better. I like that. It's just... <laughs> there's, there's a surprising amount of thought... And foresight that's gone into these and I like that a lot it's my little engineer brain just go be all happy and warm fuzzies so we're going to pull this straight out a little bit till it disconnects from an internal tab in here and then bring this out enough that it clears that tab entirely there's that tab right there so I'm, I'm gonna show you this again without the stuff in the way which is not a, a complete which is not a perfect analog but it'll do for instructional purposes so you pull this straight back and then you kind of twist it and turn it till it clears that tab and then you can bring it around to face the other way and that will give you enough clearance That'll give you enough clearance to get this little tab out. And then you can take and you can collapse this down. Just kind of combine it words the this leg down. Pull this back into place here. Push this into place. And you do kind of want to open this up. There's this little tab right here on the back end of In the back end of this this is going to fold up and tuck underneath this tab right here so bring that in tuck it underneath and then you want to bring up this guy and then bring up this guy bring it around this little tab right there and then that gives you space to bring the toe around and then fold this back up to where it was and then this kind of just slots into there and then we do the same for the other leg so open this up move this foot out of the way bring this out that panel folds away 
slide this back, clear that tab, and then manipulate this around so that so that there's clearance to get this little panel out. Combine our wars this in. And now you want to straighten that up. Bring this guy out and around. Tap this underneath there. Open that guy up. We want to open this and open this. Bring that out. Pull this out on this double hinge. Put the toe, tuck the toe back in. Bring this back on the double hinge. And fold it around into its proper position, which is right like so. And then we're going to do just like we did with the last guy. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you got to try and get everything to fit together securely. And the most obnoxious part of this is definitely trying to get, in fact, I think this is the way I did it before is I actually untabbed, I untabbed these after I told you to tab them in and push these together manually and then tab these back in behind them. There we go. And there we go. I'm trying to like push this side down and then pull this side up to kind of get those dovetails to interact with each other properly. This, these um, arm bots are the only ones that I have this problem with. Oh, come on. Because basically each train has got like a set of, a set of wheels that is just all one unit and then a set of wheels that combine together like this. And generally the combined together wheels work out pretty well, but these ones are a little bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, you can get them. And then last but certainly not least, we are going to bring this panel around, kind of fold this out part way. And then once it gets all the way in, this tab here is going to fit into that slot there. And then once that's in place, then this is going to come out. And they're going to kind of peg into each other. And we're going to do the same for the other side real quick. Bring this tab halfway out. Unplug this panel. Bring that around. Plug it in like so. Bring these out. And then we just got to take this. Bring this out on this double hinge. We're gonna tuck these tabs underneath like so. So it's gonna come in like whoosh. And I do wanna see if I can keep these panels tabbed together throughout this process because it'll be easier to put tab together out here than they will be once they're all plugged in. And plug those into these tabs right here. And then this is going to come up on a double joint, switch over, and there you have it. Give this all a nice little bit of a squeeze to make it all go into place. I do kind of regret that I couldn't seem to get this panel to uh, line up properly. 
I don't know what the issue is. I wish that I did. I think it has something to do with the interface of this tab, whether it's um, whether it's a mold defect or like a QC thing. I've seen pictures of other people on the internet having you know this all plugged in, so I don't know that it's like a systemic problem or just something with this one, this particular one. But I will say that when it's in arm mode, you're not even going to see that. So that's what I think most people are getting the set for. So like, it's not even a, a big deal. Like I will nitpick that one, but I'm not going to like really like curse and condemn the line because, because I've got a tabbing issue on that panel. Uh, again, like with the other one, you can take this and you can split it open. There's two tabs in there. There's two slots right here. And you can just plug that into there if you really need to have it all combined. And I think it's silly looking. But yeah, there he is. The green and orange trolley. that panel there we go fixed it into place um, nice uh, smoked windows all the way around I still do kind of wish that they had you know found a way to uh, paint the inside of something I don't know I'm these are really dark I don't know I don't know I don't remember if there's stuff behind that or not there is definitely some like green behind here, but it's dark enough that's not really a big issue. It's not as bad as it was on that second one that I reviewed that was like this like light. I'm trying to remember the like the one that had like white that the windows were sitting on top of. And some of them were really obvious. But it looks good. Um sharp paint apps all around. I don't see any bleed on it. Um and like I said, I've transformed this through the whole gamut before and I don't have any scrapes or scuffs the, the paint applications are really solid and durable look really good like I said really precise but yeah this figure is a high recommend for me huh? this looks like an eject button but there's nothing that ejects um, I saw someone was taking this guy off and then plugging that wing thing into there, but I'm pretty certain that's glued into place. Like it's not coming out through what I would consider to be, you know, the amount of pressure you would need to remove something that's not, that's meant to be removed. I don't think it's meant to be removed. So, but that's about all I got. This guy, again, like all these train guys is definitely a recommend for me. Um, it's funny, last time I reviewed one of these things, I was, did I say it on the video or was I talking to a friend of mine? I had mentioned that if uh, Zeta Toys ever did like a legend scale version of this, like they did with that Superior, by the way, an upcoming video for that, um, then I would like 1000% go for it. Um, Cause Legends is very much my scale, more so than Masterpiece. And then some dude on Facebook like is like, "Yeah, hey guys, I'm making a, I'm making a legend scale um uh ride and and I'm looking at that and I'm just like, "Do you take PayPal?" <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe someday I'll get some uh some STLs probably. He he says he's not selling he's not going to be selling kits, but he will probably sell the STLs, so I'll have to Get myself a resin 3D printer and figure out how to make that work. But Anyhow, great figure, great train, great robot. I like it. Oh, one thing I for did forget to mention. You can take his gun. And where does that plug in? One of these little tabs right here. And he's got a slot on the back end of that gun. And it'll just plug in. 
like so. And clear the tracks. But anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. You guys are fantastic. Um, my next video is going to be probably the combined for the whole set. So stay tuned. Everybody stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya. Bye.